from August the 5th through to the 28th, Mercury, the messenger of the gods, the guy who deals with secrets, news cycles, markets and merchandise will be retrograde. And as he moves backwards through the sky, he begins to cover the territory of both Virgo and Leo in this retrogradation. And that means that there are two parts of your natal sky, the Virgo whole sign house and the Leo whole sign house that are up for some significant revision. And these two pieces of the sky connect together in a meaningful way that I'm about to share with you so you can make the most of what is about to occur. And for the world, it will be very important because the place of Leo is prominent in the charts of Robert Kennedy Jr. and Donald Trump. And we'll see some major news stories and changes going on with both of them. We're going to cover this in great depth today. So get settled in, have a cup of coffee, a pen, paper, if you want to take notes. And I'm going to show you also some dates that are important to be aware of, because this retrograde, which begins on August the 4th, August the 5th at four degrees of Virgo and completes on August the 29th at 21 degrees of Leo are going to bring is going to bring a lot of fire change to our lives. Why do I say fire? Because even though the retrograde starts in the earth sign, it is a retrograde year for the planet Mercury, where he spends much time in the sky, very, very much time, a lot of time in Aries and in Leo and later in the fall in the sign of Sagittarius because it's what we call an elemental fire year. This is a concept created by astrologer Gary Caton. And every seven years or so, what we see is Mercury predominantly engaged in a lot of time, up to two months in fire signs because of the retrogradation and is slowing down of a speed. Mercury can travel somewhere around 40 minutes a day, up to two degrees a day. And when he's retrograde, he's traveling slow. You know, but this happened that we had an elemental fire year back in 2017. And I remind you that Donald Trump was in power in 2017 and Mercury was busy in the fire signs of Donald Trump's chart, houses one, five, and nine. And how that felt for Donald Trump in 2017 as a president may reflect how it feels for him as an incumbent or like an not incumbent as a, a contest wanting to win the contest for the election this fall. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian. I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac whole sign houses. Fixed stars and minor asteroids are my favorite. We'll bring a couple of asteroids into the mix today as well. I would really like you to consider hitting that like button and subscribing. And if you're one of my regulars and you haven't subscribed yet, would you please give me a hand and help this channel grow? I'm aiming for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Is it possible? I hope so. Um, and I appreciate all of you newbies who have come aboard because of the election astrology that I began to cover this year. Those of you who appreciated my accurate prediction that Biden would step down and that Trump would face a attempt on his life or some serious harm's way around the 15th of July. Thank you for being here as a newcomer. I appreciate your engagement in my channel. Um, I am just recorded on the day of this video, July 30th, a RFK video. I think he's going to be a really uh, a spoiler for the election. He's going to disrupt the election in a significant way. And we'll be covering that in the election video that may come out the day after this one. So stay tuned for that. I may be pu putting election videos and world astrology videos out every Friday from now on. For those of you who are down, more down for your personal astrology, you want to listen for your sun sign, moon sign, and rising. I cover that every video I do, except for election astrology videos. And your sun sign is your purpose and your career. And your moon is your home and your body and your mind. And then your ascendant is your body as well, but everything about you. So the moon is kind of the life force that animates the body, the breath of life, but the physical form and how you look is your ascendant. You know, J.D. Vance is probably a cancer rising, big moon face, right? But the beard is the sun in Leo in his second house. So there are ways that the sky even informs how we look. So listen for all three sun, moon, and rising. Determine which is the most accurate for you at any given time. Certainly, I always listen to my own rising sign and sun sign when I'm playing astrology listener, not speaker. And um, anything else I want to say? Nothing else. My sky read. Oh, timestamps pinned to the comments for your jumping to your rising sign. The header, click it. It gives you chapters. You can jump to your rising sign but or sun or moon for your personal astrology. 
But I'm also a mundane or world astrologer, and I like to use world astrology to make predictions about the future and to give uh, astrological guidance about what's going on in the sky for the world, when, whether it is about stock markets, wars, or political elections. I try to cover that too. If you don't like that kind of content, that's fine. You don't have to listen. You can go to the, the stuff at the far end, okay, after the political astrology, etc. All right, let's get rolling. Let's get rolling. First of all, let me share something with you. Take, get a pen, get a paper. Um, nope, that's not what I wanted. I'm sharing my Canva instead. Okay, stop the share. I did make something for you. Some people ask me, would you make it a little bit easier for us to find stuff on your channel? And I'm like, okay. Um, one way to do that is I could print, I could give you a list of the, the critical dates of any event. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. I want you to get a pen and paper or screenshot this so you'll have it handy on your refrigerator to understand when and where to focus during this particular Mercury retrograde. All right, so I finally figured out how to do this. There you go. So you might want to write this down. You might want to have this handy. Oh, I'm annotating. Did not mean to annotate all over that. I don't know why that is doing that. I'm assuming you guys can see these dates right now. And you may want to screenshot this or write it down because these dates are very, very important. It's easier to work with it, uh, um, the sky when you know exactly what's happening and you know when it's happening. What's well, my humble opinion anyway? You do you. I am more like, let's get ahead of the curve. So August 5th, there's a station retrograde at four degrees of Virgo because, you know, basically Mercury moved into Virgo. I didn't cover that in an astrology video yet because Mercury is not really in Virgo very long. I'll be doing that later. So August the 5th, Mercury stations retrograde at four degrees of Virgo. And obviously, if you're a Virgo sun, moon or rising, this is important, right? It's going to really impact you because you're getting a stationary Mercury in your sign. However, if you're anywhere between zero to seven degrees of Virgo sun, moon or rising, the stationary motion of Mercury at four Virgo will impact you more importantly or more critically than other later degree Virgo placements. Then August the 15th, Mercury is still moving backwards, but now he goes backwards into the sign of Leo. Mercury moving backwards into Leo, where he had been for three weeks before he had entered Virgo, means that old areas of our life that we had been dealing with in Mercury's journey through the sign of Leo become evident again. And we'll have to address them. And that's the pre-shadow period. So things going on in your life, July the 15th, when Mercury was moving from the 21st degree of Leo forward towards Virgo, are coming back into your attention during this time. Anything you were doing in the Leo sky, I'm an Aquarius rising, that would be my significant business partnerships, love relationships, etc. Anything that I was doing, in the pre-shadow period of July 15th, right, onward, I will have to redo or rethink or relook at or reinvestigate. And so that's what we mean by the pre-shadow period. Mercury was in the pre-shadow of where he would travel again. August the 15th, he retrogrades into Leo. And by August the 29th, he's now direct at 21 degrees of Leo. So he's still retrograde on the 28th. Depending on where you live in the world, the 28th, 29th, he's now in direct motion again at 21 degrees of Leo. And he's getting ready to go forward toward the Virgo part of the sky. And as he does that by September 9th, he's in Virgo. So from August the 29th to September 9th, those are important dates for you where we have this momentum, this forward movement, this forward direction that is activated by Mercury as he's ready to make decisions and do things from a place of having already revised, reviewed, and rethought stuff. And then he's going to be moving forward in Virgo. But it is until September the 11th that he is still in the, what we call the shadow period because he has to cross the fourth degree of Virgo because he was already there before, and then he retrograded there. So by the time we get past September 11th, the Mercury post-shadow period is over. So we're in an energy field of stories that have been going on then July 15th to September 11th. Really, it's that broader story structure 
but we have turning points within this story. So look at this picture, take a screenshot if you like, write it down, use these dates to understand what you're doing, when and where. But I will be talking about this material myself as well as we do the all signs delineation. So I think that's probably a good enough uh, screen share time for you to get a picture in your mind and to be able to use that. I hope that was helpful. Now, what we're going to talk about next is we're going to talk about the world, the world astrology. And what I would like to say about it is simple. I'm not going to do too much of it today. I would note that Donald Trump with his ascendant and also RFK with his ascendant in Leo, three degrees for Robert Kennedy, 29 degrees for Donald Trump, mean that they may be somewhat implicated in mercurial stories that affect them as Mercury retrogrades in the sign of Leo. However, RFK's three degree Leo ascendant is really outside of the pre post shadow material. And therefore it's possible. I mean, that his ascendant being so far away from the action, right. And the action is that 21 degrees of Leo, you know, to the end of Leo means it really doesn't necessarily get him much into intensity, but for Donald Trump with his ascendant at 29 degrees Leo, it is going to impact Donald Trump in some significant manner. And so if we were to look at the sky together, I don't maybe pull up Trump's chart, we'll be able to say something about how that may impact the election and the direction of Trump's campaign because of this retrogradation. Let me show you the sky and make some um, predictions about that. I am not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican. I live in Canada. I would be a centrist or maybe a libertarian, but I'm neither any thing in the United States. This is just astrology. Thank you, guys. It's not political opinion. So it would be a bit of an understatement, actually, for me to say that this is important for Donald Trump, because this is an election year and he's in the election. And this is a Kazemi of Mercury with the sun on his Mars on August the 18th. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of the sky, but I want to say that Mercury usually means a change of mind when Mercury moves through one's ascendant area of the chart. You are the ascendant. You're the character in the matrix, right? And the sun can be your eternal nature that plays the role, and the moon could be the life force that animates the character. But really, when the character itself receives a re retrograde Mercury, we change our mind, we make new decisions, like we kind of rethink something. So maybe it's the J.D. Vance um, uh, as his running mate, because uh, what is going on in the chatter is that that was a, a, a running mate uh, that Elon Musk and a couple other people suggested for him and his, his two sons, based on the Trump Harris, a Biden Harris ticket when they thought they were just ahead of the curve, no matter what. And what you have is like mega hat, mega hat. You got, you know, the terrible JD Vance stuff about cat women, not having children and all of, all of the dirt on him that's being pulled up. He's just weird. You know what I mean? And so that's the, the way that campaign is now being pushed out by the, um, the Harris people to make it look like, you know, Vance is a liability. And if you don't vote, forget about ex existential crisis to democracy. Now it's about sort of misogyny and women and women's rights. And so quite possibly this is not a good candidate for him to be paired with. And there will be a redo. And I've been talking to Tulsi Gabbard for ages. And I was like, oh, you keep talking to Tulsi Gabbard. He, I think it's Berg. Bergam, Bergam, that he was, I, I heard Trump wanted to pick, but he was, strong-armed into taking Vance. Um, I still think that he may go for a woman to counteract the female vote impetus that Biden is, uh, Harris is getting now. And uh, plus uh, Tulsi Gabbard keeps putting her hand up and saying, pick me. And she's also a de facto, like she, she ducked out of being a Democrat, became an independent. In other words, She's like, oh, he'd be running going, yeah, look, she couldn't even handle the Democrats who she called warmongering evil people. And, you know, he's he's always trying to pull. He, he's running on a platform of keeping the U.S. out of wars. So they have a lot in common. Plus, their natal charts are lovely together. So keep that in mind. But why I want to show you what's going to happen. I want you to show you Donald Trump's chart. I want this is a bit of political astrology before we do the main mundane astrology. Right. That's a bigger picture of his chart just so you can see it. And then I'm going to give you some ast astrological dates. And a lot of people said they can't see the charts when I use my software. So just listen to what I'm about to say, rather than me circle the wheel and turn it all over the place. Donald Trump has his ascendant on asteroid America on fixed star, fixed star, right on fixed star. 
Regulus, Little King, Born to Rule, Fame, Power, Glory, Riches, and potential, potential Fall from Power. What I'm circling is the area of the chart that is highly activated by Mercury retrograde for him. And while he had a retrogradation of Mercury here in 19, 2017, while he was in his second year of being the president of the United States, I don't know that it actually crossed over his ascendant this way, but you may still see themes to do with 2017 and his presidency, including him looking at that eclipse, apparently, and the great American eclipse uh, that play out in in a redo mode. OK, redo. But I do not remember 2017 him being like impeached and all of that. That came later in his presidency. So he wasn't running into too much trouble. So here we have the circling of the three planets that matter. And Mars is a very important planet for him. That's why he's win-lose, loser-winner, fight, fight, fight. When he got up from being shot at, these are words you use when you have Mars on the ascendant. You look at the world through the lens of competition, fighting, winning, losing. Those are his ways of being, right? That's a part of his character. And asteroid America suggesting America, okay? As important to who he is in this life. He also has the asteroid Apollo in here. So he's got the sun god, the leader god, Apollo in his chart. I didn't put Apollo in, but just trust me, Apollo is with America ascendant and Mars on it, you know, in that like tight little circle I just drew for you. Now, interestingly, what I would tell you is that this is an important time for changes in his strategy around winning or not winning an election because Mercury will retro Mercury on July the 21st crossed over his Mars direct motion and on July the 24th crossed over his ascendant. So whatever was going on for Donald Trump regarding his election campaign, et cetera, you would look back to the dates of July the 21st when Mercury crossed his Mars. Think of news information, news stories, announcements by Trump. And then Mercury on July 24th crossed his ascendant on Regulus. And then on August the 15th, retrograding. So let's go back on August the 18th, 18th, 18th and August the 15th are important dates because we are going to see some stories on August the 15th, Mercury retrograde will cross his 29 degree ascendant. And on August the 18th, Mercury retrograde will cross his Mars. So we keep seeing these pinpoints of time, the 21st and the 24th, looking like the 15th and then the 18th, right? Similar stories are applying, but retrograde means change of mind, change of direction, revising, revisioning, something he decided. Mars rules decisions to decide is to choose A or B and cut the two in half. You can't, you can't take both. You go left or right. So the deciding part of the sky and the choosing part of the sky and the acting part of the sky is Mars. So decisions and actions from his past are being rethunk and revised and reannounced perhaps sometime in the middle of August, the 15th and the 18th in particular. And then as we go forward again on September the 8th, on September September the 8th and on September the 6th, we're back in the narrative on September 6th, Mercury is now moving in direct motion over his Mars. And on September the 8th, Mercury is moving in direct motion over his ascendant. So by the time we get to that point, the decisions have been revised and we're moving forward. So I would say in the middle of August, we're talking like, yeah, near the 15th <laughs> during the Democratic National Convention, we may be looking at and again, on the 18th, significant announcements by Donald Trump regarding strategic changes in what he planned or decided he would do and the actions he would take. Now, honestly, it could even be a debate, right? Mercury's on his ascendant. I don't know if they have a scheduled debate in the middle of August with, a, with a Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. It could be that. It could also represent a change of his uh, of his attack strategies regarding his campaign. We may see a major rollout of new negative ads, but we can also see him engaged in changing his mind about matters. Now, does he have to wait, guys, until August 15th and 18th to say, I no longer want Vance in my, in my, in my, in my um, running mate capacity? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it'll happen any time during the retrograde, particularly the retrograde in Leo, but Mercury starts that retrogradation on August the 5th and through to August the 15th, right? Mercury is retrograding slowly in Trump's second house of speech. 
So he may make some announcements that pull back on things he said before. He's announced to his running mate. Maybe he'll change his mind. But so we'll see what happens. Now, what about the Kazemi? So when Mercury retrogrades into the heart of the sun, this is a very deep, profound and important Mercury sun conjunction with Mercury between the earth and the sun, close to earth, more synchronicity, more magic, more intensity and more power. And Mercury will be between the earth and the sun and conjunct the sun from our perspective on earth. On August the 18th, Kazemi trumps Mars. So I already mentioned the date, but it is also a sun conjunct Mercury retrograding on Mars in Donald Trump's chart. In my lovely book, The Archetypal Universe, Archetypal Universe by Ren Butler, what does he say when you pair together sun, Mercury, and Mars? And believe it or not, in this amazing book, he does a little triads of planets. So what happens when Mercury is with the sun and also with Mars? Shall I let you know? I think so. So give me a second while I round up sun, Mars, sun, Mercury, Mars, right? Because there's an energy of sun, Mercury, Mars, and here's what it is. The principles of this triple conjunction, the sun and Mercury in the sky retrograde on top of the Mars that belongs to Donald Trump. When sun, Mercury, and Mars are in a triad of energy together, the principles are an eager and passionate mind and dynamic communication and a capacity to make plans and to act quickly. Quick action, quick plans, dynamic communications. August 18th, Donald Trump's Mars in the house of his identity. Now, it can also be impulsive and rash communications, in-your-face directness, right? So there's a darker side, hot-headed irritation, impulsive communications, aggressive expression, um, arguing and insulting people, sarcastic comments, verbal competitive, verbal competitiveness. Well, if it's verbal competitiveness, we may be looking at a pivotal debate night event around the 18th of August. And that could be a changing of the guard in terms of the election for Donald Trump. I'd say in his favor. I say in his favor because it's going to be a Mercury moving forward as the election progresses over his ascendant. And he is the king, little king, with the announcements and the things he wishes to announce to the world. So it probably is a beneficial conjunction of the sun with Mercury. In each of our lives, when the sun conjuncts Mercury, in each of our lives, it's going to be important. And when this happens in our sky, you, me, everyone here, we're going to do all signs. It is going to happen in the sign of Leo as a part of this retrogradation. We had a Kazemi already in Aries in the spring, and we'll have one in the fall in November in the sign of Sag. And so that's the elemental earth, fire, retrograde, slow moving, close to earth, powerful Mercury storylines for all of us. Let's go ahead and touch down on all signs. If you like this kind of content, content please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you like my fan in the background. If you like uh, all signs stuff, especially I do all signs, everything. I'll be having my friend, teacher and mentor and ally colleague, uh, guy got me into astrology officially in 2018, Adam Ellibus coming to my channel soon. I think he and I are going to collaborate together on the Saturn square Mars storyline or the Jupiter square Saturn storyline, which is a deep and profound epochal energy connected to the Aquarian impulse. So we'll be talking about that together, he and I soon. So stay tuned. So I do bring guests on my channel. Why? Because I mean, I love to share brilliant minds and other astrologers intake and in input on stuff. It's not all about me, <laughs> despite the Aries placements I have. And all righty, here we go. I'll get Donald Trump out of here and we'll move into the all signs. And a reminder, this is Donald Trump's chart. I've, I've done a video on the asteroid angel with Medusa, how he almost lost his head, why he was saved. I'll put a link to the Trump chart for the angel asteroid that seemed to save his life as a bullet whizzed by his ear. And um, if you want to know, I did predict an assassination attempt. You'll find that in my Venus and Leo video. A lot of people timestamp where I talk about it. Um, they came out on July the ninth maybe and my uranus conjunction to algal mars video that might have come out on july 11th i can you just look through my recent videos and you'll find those if you really want to see how well astrology can work now one more thing before i do all signs looking at donald trump's chart you know taking it just a, a peekaboo at it together you know everybody i did say in another video and another video and another video unfortunately donald trump's son at 22 degrees 55 minutes of gemini 
and Kamala Harris's ascendant at 24 degrees of Gemini are going to be encountering a refrainment from Jupiter as Jupiter approaches each of their sons and turns around and changes his mind. Yes, before the election. And so Jupiter retrograde can indicate as Jupiter approaches the ascendant and Gemini of Kamala Harris and the leader son of <laughs> Trump and retrogrades that neither of them will be coronated in the upcoming election this fall, that something will disrupt that election. I did a long video about RFK maybe being the disruptor. If you're interested in that video, it may be coming out the day after this one. I may be coming up with Fridays as election day content. We'll see how that goes. Now, it'll be coming out soon. All right, so um, this is Trump and <laughs> Jupiter will be approaching, well, we're here, let's do it. Jupiter will be approaching his son and Jupiter is unable to make the connection. It's like, you know that old song, the connection is made, you know, the one guys, eh? Way back in the eighties or something. Well, the connection isn't made and it's nor is it made for 24 degrees Kamala Harris ascendant in a year in which he's running for president. So there's a retrogradation at 21 degrees and 19 minutes, 17 minutes on October 13th. Now that's pretty close to the election, right? That's literally about three weeks away. And we see Jupiter deciding not to meet with Trump's son and not to meet with Kamala's ascendant, close but not quite. Will something delay the election? Will there be a contested election? Why are why is Jupiter not coronating Trump nor by nor uh, Kamala? It feels inauspicious. However, RFK does have his son sitting at 17 degrees of Gemini and gets a lot of attention from Jupiter, gets some kind of coronation in a Jupiter return. So it's, sorry, it's not his son, it's RFK's Jupiter gets Jupiter return coronation in the buildup for the election, which is its own, oh my God, what the hell is that story that we'll have to look at in more detail, but it's in my RFK video. Okay, moving into the general story for each of us, let's get going. Recently used, Robert Kennedy, you know, uh, transits. Here we go. This is the sky. I think you just look to the eastern horizon when I'm talking and you don't, you come into my premieres. I do all live premieres. Come in, I chat with you, discuss the content, take your questions. But if you are confused about where we are, look to the left of your screen when you're looking at your, your screen. And that is the symbol for the sign I will be talking about as this circle rotates through the sky. All right, so let's move it into a uh, time frame uh, where we see the retrogradation beginning August the 5th. And let's also move it to Aries because we start with Aries for convenience, not because they're special. Just when people come into the, the live premiere, they know that we're going in zodiacal order from Aries through to Pisces. Sometimes people say I didn't give you enough time. Like, oh my God, Leo got short shrift. If I give you less time, it's because there's less happening in your sky. You know, like less to talk about. It's not that I have a thing against you, okay, and you're Leo or whatever else we're talking about. It's literally, there's just nothing more to say. So we're starting off with the Aries sun, moon, and rising sign. If you are an Aries, this is a story of a retrogradation in an elemental fire year not seen since 2017 of the planet Mercury starting the retrograde in the sixth house, moving to your fifth. In essence, if I was to blend the meaning of the two houses, I'd be going, okay, what is it about Mercury going backwards from the house of work, job, pets, tenancies, and rentals, as well as health matters, where he may be, by the way, having you revise your health plans as he goes backward from August the 5th until August the 15th, because that's while well, he's still in your sixth house and not quite there into the Leo house of children romance, sexuality. It's possible, for example, to code this as doing some revisions regarding health matters that benefit your romantic and sexual life. That's as simple as that, August the 5th to the 15th. But also Mercury retrograde, maybe you're going to change your mind about a job. Maybe you're going to change your mind about a pet. Maybe you're going to revise some strategies to do with your health. Maybe you're going to rethink something here. And that rethinking and revising in the Virgo part of your sky is evident between the 5th of August and the 15th of August. And then we're in Leo land until the 29th when he turns direct. From the 15th to the 29th, you might be revising plans to do with um, your children, 
uh, conversations to redo that you've already had with your children, especially conversations that began in the second half of July. You may be revising some things here to do with what you want to do that brings you joy and enjoyment, play and pleasure, but also things to do with your creative and entrepreneurial endeavors. If any of you are entrepreneurs or creatives, then this can be about some revisions in the area of your chart that has to do with your creativity or your muse or your inspiration, revise the book, revise the book proposal, <laughs> revise the, um, the song that you're writing. But also remember, it connects to the workhouse. It's, these two must be together somehow. So this would be professional work, not a hobby. Some of you might be making revisions and creative projects that connect to professional endeavors. And if you're an entrepreneur, of course, revisions in entrepreneurial self-employed, independent business strategies, being very much a part of what you're thinking and changing your mind about perhaps even on August the 15th, 5th to the, on August the 15th to the 29th. And of course, we would say that on the 29th through to September 9th, this is the direct motion as we see Mercury barreling forward and coming back to Virgo. So you're going to really make Make hay, you know, you're going to do things directly, phone calls, emails, text messages coming from your children to your children, with your lover, with your um, creative projects, really lots of action going on here. Good for marketing and selling and promoting if you're in a business environment that's self-employed. And that chutzpah for all of that begins August the 15th, the 29th. I'll use me as an example. I have an airy sun career. I'm going to be promoting my sky reader course. I will probably not open a shopping cart on a mercury retrograde. I will often open up the tuition cart, so to speak, August the 15th, when we have a direct, no, August the 29th. Oh my God, I guess I will be doing it retrograde. Maybe I will open up the cart August the 29th and only open it for two weeks, right? So that we all begin the class in the middle of September, but I'll be doing a lot of promotional strategies, August 15th to the 29th to get people ready for the two week enrollment card. That's probably what I'll be doing. Now, strategically, lastly, what about that Kazemi? I'm going to do a whole deep dive video, a free webinar on the August 18th Kazemi. I'll be bringing in minor asteroids and a bunch of cool stuff. But that August 18th Kazemi, it's going to hit Trump's Mars. It's going to happen for all of us, right? At 26 degrees of Leo. Resetting a button in the Leo part of your sky, a new direction, a new way of approaching your creativity, your children, your sexuality, and your romance. And you'll see evidence of this new approach in the six weeks that follow. You'll get the vibe. Oh my God, whole new beginning. You can use the Kazemi to download information, inspiration, and ideas. Join me in my free webinar. It'll help you use this. I'll be talking about some of the minor asteroids involved. Just click the button below in the description box to get on that free, um, free webinar. And why not, right? It's like free. So come aboard and do that. Let's move on to Taurus. So the deal is this, guys. I'm going to keep going. But the Kazemi basically is going to be on a star called Alphard. And it's also going to connect to the asteroid directly, Apophis. And it's an intensity, guys. I cannot wait to teach this. So come aboard and grab the free, you know, the free class I'm going to be teaching. So you can like learn about how to use this material in your own life more proactively. And there we go. So what about you, Taurus? It's Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. It is going to be a retrograde that has like been a part of a pattern that went back to, you know, around this time of year in 2017, it might be useful to go back to your life in the August, September of 17 to compare notes. But we have a retrogradation of Mercury out of the sign of Virgo through the sign of Leo. And I just jumped us ahead when I was you know, changing the screen to show you the Kazemi. Now, the sign of Leo in your chart and Mercury and Virgo are very critical here for you. You want to look at this idea that starting on August the 5th, Mercury retrogrades from your fifth house. He was trying to make something happen in the first four, four degrees. He was like, hmm, I'm going to make something happen in your fifth house. And what is your fifth house about? Your fifth house is about love, romance, children. It's about your creativity and your pleasures. What, what brings you joy? What brings you pleasure? And, your, you know, your art and creativity are here as well. And you may have been moving forward in some area of pleasure, joy, fun, romance, sex, creativity, or children, or fertility, trying to make a baby with Venus here, uh, Mercury here. And then you decide to go backwards. No, I, I'm going to go back and rethink this idea. This whole thing needs a revision. And the revision began on August the 5th. 
And as you begin to revise things that were of importance to you there, by the time you get to August the 15th, now you're taking those fifth house revisions and August the 15th through to the 29th, you're still revising, but now you're bringing the revisions into your home, into your home, literally, where do you live? Into your private life, into your domicile. Fifth house can be revising your pleasures in your home, uh, fifth house to fourth house, revising how you create art or um, creative projects in your home. Maybe, you know, you need to build an art studio, revising your relationship to sexuality in the home. Maybe you have to get a new bed <laughs> for you and your partner. Maybe you have to work out a sex schedule. You know, when you want to make a change, right? You want to rethink something. You want to revise something. Now, you could have communications from people from your past who are former lovers, you know, romantic partners from your past coming out of the woodwork to reach out to you as a result of the retrogradation of Mercury in your fifth house. If that's true, those lovers that from the past may occur in email, phone calls, and texts between the 5th of August and the 15th. But by the time we get to Leo on the 15th to the 29th during the retrograde, then there's things to do with your home you need to make a change in. Now, retrograde Mercury in the fourth house could change situations regarding legal contracts and negotiations and home. And with the planet Juno in the sixth house, changes regarding contracts for leases in particular. So if you're a landlord you know, or a tenant, it doesn't matter. Home, the residential lease changes and contract changes are somewhat possible here for you during the month of August, especially starting August the 5th, because it is the house of landlords and tenants that are, are involved. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Forget what I just said. It literally is a story of a change of home connected to leases and lease arrangements that could be possible, including revising a lease, changing a lease, renegotiating a lease turning, uh, uh, changing, you know, like saying no to an existing lease, August the 15th to the 29th. Mercury retrograde in the fourth house often brings communications from people you knew in your childhood or from your mother in particular or your parents. Lots of phone calls, text messages, connections to those people uh, coming through your sky as well. The Kazemi is going to happen on this uh, part of the sky on August the 18th that is connected to the 26th degree of Leo, but it's a very powerful Kazemi conjunct Apophis conjunct the Sphinx star Alfar. We'll be diving into that in my free webinar in the description box below is the free sign up link here. You want to reset a button, restart, reset in a way you haven't done since 19, 2017, where you live, your relationship to your mother, what you do in and from your home, things that have to do with negotiations and contracts around land, property, and real estate. You're resetting a button here, and it will be over the next six weeks that follow, August 18th, that you see the visible evidence of that reset. They will know what is going to be renewed and reset and redone in that part of your chart. And don't forget the day of the Kazemi, the 18th, can be really good for divine downloads. And the eighth house, the fourth house is private, home life, what you do alone at home, home alone, you know what I mean. So you can use that energy as well. So, you know, use it or lose it. There is a reset button in your coming up here. We'll be doing a whole video on Jupiter, Mars, but that also says also financial matters to do with property, home and real estate, maybe leases also on the agenda with this Kazemi reset of August the 18th. Gemini, you are looking at sun, moon, and rising sign. And I have a progressed sun here, pro progressed sun, progressed planets, secondary to the natal chart. Always start with your natal chart. But Gemini, we have, you are ruled by Mercury, right? You sun, moon, and people rising. Mercury's your Lord. He's doing a lot of shit here with the retrograde. So Mercury tends to be, um, you know, for you guys, a very important planet. And he begins his retrogradation on August the 5th at four degrees of Virgo in your fourth house of home, land, property, and real estate. And as he goes backwards through the sky, I want to get that moon out of there. It's just distracting because all F. Okay, we don't need it. We really don't need any of the other planets. I might keep Juno in there just to make it simple, right? And the ascendant shouldn't be there. Excuse me. So what we have is Mercury retrograding from your fourth house. And that could be a revision, rethinking, or redoing of something to do with your property, land, home, and real estate matters. You may renegotiate a lease, revise an agreement around property. You may communicate a bit from people from your past, especially from your childhood, 
or your parents as well. Maybe your mom, it's a house of the mother. And it's just a little bit of a dip backwards there on August the 5th through to the 15th in the areas I've just described. But then we move Mercury into your third house and the changes you're making in the fourth impact the third. So it may be a change of neighborhood. It may be a change of home and neighborhood. It may be things you're doing and revising in and from your home projects, et cetera, that then come into changes around writing projects, uh, social media engagements, travel plans, sibling, younger sibling and siblings in general relationships, things to do with teaching and learning. For example, I'll be teaching Sky Reader in September. What am I doing when Mercury retrogrades through the house of skills-based teaching on August the 15th? through to August the 29th, I'm making revisions. Maybe I'm revising the start date. Maybe I'm revising the content. I'm not sure, and something's getting changed. And also you might think about a Mercury retrograde in the third house as changes in your travel plans, especially shorter distance travel, or you're traveling to a place you've been before, or you're teaching a course you've taught before, or you're learning in a course you've learned before, you're extending the learning, it's nothing brand new. And aunts, uncles, niece, cousins, nieces, cousins, and nephews can be uh, third house people. And you may be hearing from them, text messages and phone calls for matters that connect to home property and real estate land and where you live because of the beginning of the retrograde in the fourth house. A major reset button at 26 degrees of the sign of Leo is happening on September the 8th. I don't know why I moved this away from the 18th, but I did. And you'll notice that you're going to reset yourself down here in your fourth house, a new beginning. And you'll see it in the six weeks that follow regarding your home. Oops, sorry, I lost where I was. I apologize. I am really sorry about that, guys. Somehow this didn't do what I wanted. You're revising your travel plans and you're resetting your journey, a uh, way you're going to do your journeys. You're resetting something to do with your relationship with a younger sibling. You're resetting a writing project, revising. Well, you, you're doing the revisions, but the Kazemi is like a deeper reset. It's like it's on Elfard, it's on Apophis. We'll be talking about that in the webinar, very intense energies. But you're really going into some kind of new beginning when it comes to projects that involve writing, communicating, speaking. This is a communications, marketing, and selling house. New beginnings and revisions and new ways of doing marketing, selling, and communicating from a Kazemi in your third house. So I'll have a whole Mercury Kazemi webinar for the deep dive, but I want you to get the gist of that. Now, obviously, with Jupiter Mars in your first house, you're lucky, you're bold, you're confident, you're able to flow towards these changes in writing, communicating, etc. No problems at all. And travel plans as well, especially travel plans connected to uh, committed long-term romantic love will be a very important stories for you around August the 18th through to the 29th. And uh, so let's see what happens. You may even be hatching a travel plan that could happen before September the 9th, because that's when Mercury gets the heck out of Virgo. Maybe it's just a getaway, but we'll see. So you want to go back to 19, 2017, I always want to remind people the last time we had Mercury here. So Cancer, like Mercury doing deep retrogradation Kazemis. So Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, Elemental Fire Year with Mercury, last seen in 2017. Maybe events that were transpiring in August, September of 17 may rec, rec, re, reverb for you as similar or familiar. Mercury will retrograde. August the 5th at four degrees of Virgo. This is your third house. Third house matters are going to be revised. It looks like a travel house for a lot of people. Are you going to change a travel plan August the 5th? Are you going to revise a written project? Are you going to hear from aunts, uncles, cousins, and siblings? These are all possibilities. As this retrograde August the 5th begins, it finally transports itself into Leo on August the 15th. So now the revising and rethinking is about finding financial matters for the most part. You may revise your speech. Literally, you have, you're going to like say something and you change your mind. But for the most part, this is your resources house. And so financial resources and rethinking, revising and re-strategizing, changing your mind about those matters. It's a spending house. Maybe you had a plan, a trip, planned a trip. It was going to cost money. Now you're revising, rethinking and changing your mind about that trip because it's too expensive or that course you wish to study that was a skills-based course. Or because of this beginning August the 5th, you may go back and study something you've learned before. But when we move 
August 5th to the 15th, restudy something, but August the 15th and 29th, you may be changing your mind about it in terms of the financial cost of that matter. With Mercury going backwards in your second house, quite often there is a need to return something you possess. You know, if you bought something that maybe, you know, Mercury retrograde, you bought something anytime uh, during the pre-shadow of July 16th, and it's a dud, you know, take the car back to the dealer, you're going to take the sofa back to the sofa place, the mattress doesn't work. Mercury retrograde in the second house can often look like returning a possession to the place where you got it. And you may also, as I said, have spoken something after July 16th, made a promise, said something, and now you're going to take it back, right? To somebody that matters to you, perhaps. I'm not going to say who, but whatever, who, whatever it would be. Um, with Juno uh, in the fourth house at the time of the Kazemi, where there's a big reset button in your finances, some of your financial resets that are going to take place in the six weeks that follow the August 18th Kazemi may hearken to resetting your finances in connection with long distance international revenue from foreign entities, people, and places, or including digital borderless income and long distance client revenues, et cetera. And you're resetting yourself here. There's a new way of doing it. There's a new plan to generate money in that regard. Also the retrograde Mercury may reset matters to do with your home and agreements and contracts to do with property, land, and real estate. Some of you may indeed be looking at contractual agreements here. And the reason I brought that up is this is a sex whole sign sextile to Juno. And maybe some of you are rethinking your lease or rethinking the the negotiations because you possess a house, right? <laughs> maybe you really wanted that house and you're in a bidding war and you pull back, or maybe you made an offer and they counter offered and you don't want to take it. So some of you may want to renege on contracts, but in the six weeks follow to do with property, land, and real estate, in the six weeks that follow the Kazemi, right? Which is going to happen on the 18th of August. You are going to make a very wise, wise choices regarding your money, maybe property and also foreign and long distance revenue. All righty, Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. What happens when we have this Kazemi not seen since summer of 2017, this kind of Kazemi in an elemental fire year? not Kazemi, retrograde of Mercury through Leo. Let's start with the beginning. August the 5th, four degrees Le Virgo. Money, money house, spending, savings, resources financially. Heads backwards into the house of your identity. You might rethink money that you've taken or money that you've spent or money that you've earned. And you may be doing some rethinking, revising about the, that those finances. Donald Trump is a Leo rising. Maybe he's taking a lot of money from Elon Musk in order to pull J.D. Vance into the mix. Now he doesn't want J.D. and he'll give Elon his money back. Just an example. What are you Leos doing where you may have actually taken money and want to give it back? Now, the other way of looking at this is because of the retrograde starts on the 5th through to the 15th in your spending house, you may really go back over the fine print regarding contracts or agreements you've made with financial matters, maybe with siblings, maybe third house people, right? Sextile. Um, later on, it'll be sextile. But I think that this retrograde in the second house, I, I, I don't know that you want to keep something that you possess. You know, you might change your mind. You, I don't know what you possess, a car, a home, you know, a thing you own, possessions, uh, the I have house, and you're changing your mind. I don't know if I want this thing. And again, because the shadow pre-shadow period was July 15th, anything you purchased back in July 15th onward, you may just change your mind and go, what the hell was I thinking? I don't want this anymore. Can I take it back? Um, so spending habits change, revise, rethink, etc. cetera. We, when we get to August the 15th, and through to the 29th, we have that retrogradation in your house, in the sign of you, to 21 degrees of Leo. So all of you Leos, you know, 20 to 29 degrees are really impacted. Leo, sun, moon, and rising, 20 to 29. You are definitely changing your mind. You are definitely rethinking something. You're in a major process of revising some kind of decision or action or something that you have been thinking about. And this has been true, uh, you know, for a while, like you know, we would start thinking about it maybe as early as July 16th. Now we go backwards here from the 15th of August to the 29th. And that's when you're doing the rethink, but after the 29th of August to September 9th, now you're making actions happen from your new plan, your new idea, your new, new revision of some thing that you want to revise, rethink and change your mind about basically. So think about, you know, that. 
the Kazemi is at uh, on the 18th of August, 26 degrees. Obviously, a 26 degree sun, moon, or Leo are really getting a major energy here. Happy birthday to the Leo suns at 26 degrees. But you're you're going to find this Kazemi, Venus, I mean, Mercury, sun, reset button on a very powerful Alphard and asteroid Apophis. That's why you want to take the free webinar that I'm giving you to describe much more detail about how to use this Kazemi in my description box below. But in essence, the reset button is you. You are resetting, revising, rethinking. And in the six weeks that follow, you know what this means. It's not confusing to you. You're going to know how you made a major pivot that changes your reality because you are making a change from within. This reminds me, if you think back to maybe what was going on in August of 2017, when you had the same kind of retrograde and Kazemi happening, what kind of major life changes were you making at that time by rethinking and re-ideating something? All right, let's go into Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. If you're a Virgo, this is the energy of a Mercury Kazemi that is a no, Mercury retrograde that is occurring on August the 5th, starting from the fourth degree of Virgo. Well, Virgo is all about you. You are the one that is the Virgo be being. If you have a sun, moon, or rising in the first five degrees of Virgo, it's really impacting you. You're making some big changes. All Virgos feel it nonetheless, regardless of degree. You are rethinking, revising, remembering, often a Mercury retrograde in a first house can help you thinking back to your past, revising and rethinking and remembering your past. And you'll be in that revise, rethink and remember your identity and your past from August the 5th to the 15th. And people from your past that you haven't seen in a long time, you may be compelled to email, phone or text them and get back in touch with them from August the 5th to the 15th. But then on the 15th, we move into the sign of Leo and no longer are you all about you, but rather you're thinking and revising from the place of self undoing addictions, bad habits. You may in this case be studying, learning or communicating a lot with dreaming about meditating about the way you undo yourself, sabotage yourself, including the word, of course, addictions. I want to say that if you have a substance abuse problem or addiction or habit that you don't want, this is a powerful Kazemi coming up here on August the 18th. Now you're revising, rethinking and redoing and going back to the past. Yes. August the 15th, the 29th, but then we turn around on the 21st degree of Leo and we move forward till September 9th in some bold, ambitious direction regarding your self undoing. Now, because sometimes you can make money or travel to foreign countries in the 12th house or go into an ashram or a retreat center or a rehab center, these are all possibilities as well between August 15th to the 29th. You do have a broad flow from the mentor Chiron in the eighth house of psychology. And some of you may be addressing your psychological needs very deeply between August the 15th and the 29th to do again with self undoing sabotage and bad habits and patterns, including addictions. I think the Kazemi of the 26th of the month is very powerful for you because that Kazemi, oh, sorry, the 18th of August at 26 degrees reset on Alphard, which has to do with emotional patterns, the star and the solitary one, the alone one, that star and Apophis, which is a destructive, but maybe constructive, destructive energy is important to you because you're going to have a profound reset button in your 12th house of undoing and addictions that then begins to generate a current of new, new success in the six weeks that follow, especially after we see the direct motion of Mercury, August the 29th through to September 9th, all systems go. Pay attention to your dreams. Come to my free webinar. Mercury is a dream messenger in a dream house for you between August 15th and 29th. Retrograde is close to earth. Your dreams will give you profound insights and you can really work with the deeper psychological and spiritual parts of your life between August the 15th and the 29th in that retrograde time frame in your 12th house. Come to my free webinar, guys. It's in the description box below. All righty, replay available if you can't make it, as always. Uh, Libra, sun, moon, and rising, what's going on here? First of all, Libra, you have this Mercury uh, retrogradation on August the 5th, beginning in your 12th house, which is a very subtle place. 
August the 5th retrograde, you know, through to August 15th, you're kind of feeling like your dreams are telling you things, your meditations are very sparkly. You may find yourself engaged in solo activities and time alone that involve going back to your past, nostalgia, past life regressions, inspecting your spiritual practice, that kind of thing. Some of you may get money from foreign countries, foreign lands and foreign shores from your past coming back to you as well. Now, ultimately, when we move this uh, away from your Virgo story and the retrograde begins to move on the 15th through to the 29th <clears throat> through Leo, this is about that part of your chart that represents your gains from your career and your friends and allies and benefactors and your elder sibling, one above you. And because it's retrograde, you may hear from friends from your past coming back in emails and phone calls, text messages, etc., from August the 15th to the 29th. Or there may have been a group you belong to, a club, some kind of connection to a community from your past, and you re-engage that community again, become a part of it again, communicate with them again, engage with them socially again between August the 15th and 29th. Embedded in this retrograde in the sign of great gains from your career and social groups and networks is also a Kazemi that happens to be a Sun-Mercury moment. Co combining forces on August the 18th on a powerful star, Alphard, and an asteroid called Apophis. Major intensity around resetting your larger social groups. In the six weeks that follow the 18th of August, Kazemi, you're going to notice that you begin to maybe make major decisions and changes regarding your social life, groups of belonging, and also the means by which your career gains are made manifest. You may also revise some of your long-range dreams and plans for your life. And some of those rearrangements of the plans may involve things to do with foreign places, foreign lands, and foreign shores, as well as opportunities in your career from foreign places and foreign shores as Jupiter conjunct Mars in the ninth as exaltation lord of your tenth suggests foreign entities and foreign companies and foreign places can be very uh, much a part of the way your career gains are going to reset. I would also say to you with this reset button in the sign of Leo that you really want to pay attention here, okay, to that elder sibling. Whoever, if you have one, this is also a reset button involving your relationship with them or in their life as well. Thanks for listening, Libra. Sign up for my free webinar. Learn a lot more about this uh, for yourself. If you can't attend live, you'll get the replay. Link will be in the description box below. So Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. In your, the Mercury Kazemi, the Mercury retrograde, excuse me, guys, begins on August the 5th at four degrees of Virgo in your 11th house of good spirit. You're going to make some changes, revisions, or uh, hear from friends from the past. So you might rethink some of your social group and belonging. You may rethink the way you make money in your career. But importantly, anytime we see a retrogradation happening here in your 11th house, which is August 5th to the 15th, people from your past who are friends come out of the woodwork or an estranged elder sibling or even just your elder sibling is suddenly communicating fiercely and excitingly to and with you. Also, this is the hopes, dreams, and wishes house as well. And you may be revising some of your longer range goals and plans for your life and the way you make money as well from your career path. Some revisions on going there, August the 5th to the 15th. But then we have the retrogradation moving into your 10th house from August 15th to the 29th. Now you're revising your career. So because it starts off in the gains from your career, like your salary, your gains, and now it's back to your career, go back to July 15th, especially what things were happening in the pre-shadow in your career and reputation space, in your job and work. And now it's connecting you to something going on, I think August 15th to the 29th, where you're like, okay, I changed my mind. I don't want this job. I changed my mind. I don't want to be part of this division. I changed my mind. I don't want to focus on this direction of my career or the boss is changing your, their mind. Or if you're unemployed, you want a job, you're going back to a company or a, a place of employment or a career direction of expressing your career success in a place you've done in the past. And the past is meeting the now, right? In the career story of you. This happened in 2017 in the summer where this Leo energy was happening in the Kazemi. And if you can go back to August, September of 2017, you might be able to remember how these themes played out then. Now, the other thing I'd mention here, give me a sip of kombucha and we'll get going. I would like to point out that Kazemi at 26 degrees of Leo, say your midheaven is at 26 degrees of Leo for some of you. 
Big deal. Say you're a Scorpio ascendant, it's near 26 degrees of Scorpio. It's a big deal. It's angular, massive reset button, massive change in your career expression, in your purpose, in your visible reputation. You're retired. What do people see you doing in the world? Playing golf, working at the soup kitchen. You know, what are you doing? It's major change in what you do visibly in the world. If you're a student, well, you, how's your reputation going as a student? What people see you do is study, get, you know, go to school. But major changes in the expression of your visible life in the world because of this Kazemi on Alphard, on Apophis, the enemy of the sun god Ra, big energies here. What is shifting for you in that 10th house? Because you'll definitely notice between August 29th and September 9th, as Mercury is moving direct, right? For the rest of the Leo part of the sky, as he moves back towards Virgo, the momentum is here. You're beginning to see, oh my God, I'm changing my career, my gains in my career, the way I make the money I make, all shifting gears for many of you. All right, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising, going back in time, reminding you of gently that this occurrence of a lot of fire, elemental fire, Mercury, including a Kazemi and a retrograde in Leo, happened in the summer, August, September of two, maybe July, August, September 2017. You might want to compare notes to what I'm about to describe. On August the 5th, Mercury stations retrograde at four degrees of Virgo. Now, Virgo happens to be in your chart, a part of the sky that delineates your visible career and reputation. And then he retrogrades into Leo from the 15th to the 29th of August. The first part of the story, August 5th to the 15th, may indicate some kind of change of mind about your career path, a change of plans in your career and reputation, a change by the, the boss or someone else in the career space, uh, revising a corporate plan or your role in it. Some changes are happening there. They're going backwards. But you may hear from people from corporate or workspace or career spaces from your past, phone calls, emails, and text messages from former colleagues and bosses from your past coming out of the blue, perhaps August the 5th to the 15th. And then the Mercury moves into the ninth house, which is far off foreign shores and lands, visas and passports, academic settings, um, things to do with judges and court and legal matters, things to do with book publishing, for example. So now we got to tie the 10th house and 9th house themes in, and you may be finding human resource departments belong to the 9th house, um, career coaches and guides and mentors, but you're going back into a very dharmic house. You know, what's the meaning of my life? So career and reputation. So I'll use an example of an author, person I know, book is, book is out, um, self-published kind of vanity press, maybe. Um, so but for career purposes. So maybe like, for example, Mercury goes back into the ninth house of publishings for this person and says, we're going to redo the book with a traditional publisher or something like that. Let's re revise, redo the publishing book, publishing part of the sky. And podcasting can be ninth house. Some of you may go uh, on a podcast you've been to before. For example, if you're like, type to appear on podcasts, um, retrograde Mercury in a Dharma house is is also joined with a Kazemi in the heart of the sun on August the 18th. That's a major reset around what's the meaning of my life? What's my purpose? What's my dharma? How do I live in alignment with what I'm here for? That kind of stuff. So there may be that kind of reset button August the 18th. And in the six weeks that follow, you'll see evidence of it, especially August the 29th and September 9th, when the direct motion Mercury gets kickoff, right? Now, the Kazemi also is doing a major reset here with um, a kind of a, the, the Apophis asteroid, right? The sun god Ra's enemy. And this is a house of religion, spiritual philosophy. And there may be a big shift in your spiritual philosophy and the way you see spiritual truth and wisdom in your life coming through here. And you may have experienced this kind of reset in your life before, like every seven years, but this is a big deal because it's so intense with the asteroid Alphard, the solitary one involved as well not the asteroid, this fixed star. I would say some of you may engage with therapists, guides, coaches, counselors, mentors from the past, and they may be coming back to you for some reason. Uh, you may be using their, them to harness greater career success. So a career coach, a career mentor or guide, or you may be learning something, uh, you know, some kind of academic or professional education from the past returning to deepen it so that you can succeed more deeply in your career. And this window of, you know, revising, redoing that education or coaching or 
guide from the past is really August 15th to the 29th so that you can bust out and go forward August 29th to September 9th in successful ninth house matters. And then later 10th house matters. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising, the energy of a, a Mercury retrograde uh, in an elemental fire year in this time of year, August, September, um, happened in 2017. So sometimes it goes, it's useful to go back. And when, is, uh, and when I'm describing what's happening this time, see if similar vibes happened back then. So if you're in the live premiere, hit the like button. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You know the drill. So Capricorn. In the sky, we're going to say this. With the retrogradation of Mercury beginning in your ninth house and then moving into your eighth house, it's a money house and a ninth house is the meaning of life, but also travel to foreign lands and passports and academic environments and things to do with your spiritual philosophy. Certainly, you may hear from people from the past, August the 5th to the 15th that have to do with your spiritual community or foreigners you've known from the past or academic and you know professors and students from your past coming back to you with emails and phone calls or legal matters need to be revised in front of a judge and figuring out a new strategy august the 5th to the 15th august the 15th to the 29th now mercury moves through leo all the way back to 21 leo indicating major changes going on here for you capricorns to do with your long range Jo jointly held funds and resources. And I call that chunky money because you share the stock, you share a oh, shareholder to stock, you share the inheritance with your family of origin, you share the money with your significant business and love partners. That kind of money is a revision time frame. You're revising your approach to that money. You're, you're going back to the past. Now, sometimes I've seen Mercury retrograde in the eighth house indicate money from the past coming to you. If it comes from your mom or dad, family of origin, inheritances, but even like an insurance payout or tax rebate, and maybe there wasn't enough or they didn't do it right. And there's a revision and you might receive some money from your past, basically coming back out of the blue. When would that happen to you? It would happen between August the 5th and the 29th of August. And then we go direct motion August 29th to September 9th. Now I want to be clear about the eighth house. It can be a house of hidden things and secrets and Mercury is going backwards. So secrets hidden from the, you see, Hidden secrets and hidden things from your past may be coming out for a re, 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 uh, re look at it <laughs> or someone's spilling secrets from your past. It could be. And when would that be? August 15th to the 29th. Also, is an occult mysteries house and Mercury likes to study and you may be engaged in occult learning, studying and learning the deep mysteries of life. When Mercury goes direct, August 29th to September 9th, you get the momentum you need in the financial part of your chart. And some of that momentum may then move into Mercury in your ninth house involving a travel plan, financial opportunity from foreigners in foreign places. Again, it was seeded from the past, but now it's moving forward. The Kazemi happens to occur of Mercury in the heart of the sun on the 18th of August, and it's happening at 26 Leo. That's a major reset button for you in this part of your chart. You're truly changing the way you deal with that financial area of your chart to do it with the investments you have, the 401k, the money makes money, uh, passive residual income, money you share with your marriage partner, business partners, inheritance monies, those kinds of funds and the way you deal with them is having are having a major change, a major reset button for you. So look for that and we'll do a webinar on that Kazemi. If you want to join me for that webinar and learn more about Apophis and Alphard and how to use those energies in this Kazemi, come on board. In the description box is the link. Replay will be available if you can't make it live. All right, Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. What do we do with the Kazemi? Oops, I mean a retrograde. There is a lot like the summer, August, September of 2017. Well, we see the Mercury retrograde begin August the 5th at four degrees of Virgo. Four degrees of Virgo is your taxes, your incorporations, your tax structures, your inheritance money, the money you share with a business or a long-term committed love partner, the money from your investments, all of that. So there's now a turning back, you know, go back. Sometimes money from the past comes back to us when Mercury retrogrades in the eighth house. So you may receive money owed to you from the past 
You know, in some way, maybe the government tax re- did your taxes and you paid too much and you'll get a rebate, or maybe you, an old inheritance uh, inheritance money that never really resolved properly comes back to the past. So money from the past is returning to you potentially in the window of August the 5th to the 15th. So not too shabby, right? At the same time, Mercury then moves in August the 15th through to August the 29th, your seventh house. This is our seventh house. I'm an Aquarius rising of significant long-term committed marriage type partnerships and business partnerships and clients and audience and marketplace. Clients from your past, important ones. Marriage type partners from the past, business partners from the past, coming into the present between August the 15th and the 29th. Yes, phone calls, texts, emails, et cetera, expect it all. It's so predictable. It's laughable. So when I go back to when the summer of 2017, when I think about partners from the past coming back, a few of longer term relationship partners from my past suddenly furiously were phone calling, texting me and emailing me. You can't make this stuff up. Now, they come back so you can revise something, not just to annoy you. So, you know, finish the relationship up on a better note or something, or revise what the lessons were you learned from those relationships. That's all that means. Legal contracts and agreements from the past might need to be revised and redone. And there's some renegotiation going on, you know, any kind of contract, you know, a rental contract, a purchase contract, a terms of service job contract, those contracts and vows and agreements from the past are being revised and reassessed August the 15th to the 29th. So you can jump forward forward on the 29th of August to September 9th and get the momentum you need in seventh house matters, which I just described, right? Partnerships, contracts, agreements, audience, clients, marketplace. I think a lot of us here will be looking at this Kazemi that's happening on August the 18th at 26 degrees of Leo at, with a fixed star Alphard and Apophis asteroid as a very profound reset button in our significant relationship house. Now, because we all have, some of us have long-term committed lover business partners, their life may be having a major reset. It may not be a about you. They've got some reset. They've got some news. They've got some insight. They've got some downloads around August the August the 15th. But if it is about you and the person, then it's the resetting of the relationship territory itself. And in the six weeks that follow, that relationship reset also connects to financial matters in the eighth house of chunky money. So it's the relationship to your partner and the monies you would co-resource or co-share in business or love partnerships and a major revision of how those things are played out. Now, Mercury does talk, when Mercury's in the eighth house, any secrets that are not known to you about you to do with love partners, secrets from them in their past, well, you may find out some of the things about them in their past between August 5th and 15th and have to deal them up between August 15th and 29th. So secrets about a significant love partnership about their past may be revealed to you in this particular Mercury retrograde window of time, August 5th to the 28th. (laughs) All right. And uh, that's about all I've got for us. I hope that is useful. And now we're doing the last sign and that is Pisces sun and moon and rising. All right. Venus, I mean, Mercury is retrograding like you did in the summer of 2017, August, September. Go back and see if you can compare notes really. So this retrograde, August 5th to the 28th, it starts on August 5th at four degrees of Virgo. This is a part of your chart that represents your significant long-term committed business and love partnerships, audience, clients, and marketplace. Old clients, old business partners, and old long-term committed love partners from your past, marriages as well. Their, their, Their phone calls, text messages, and emails coming back at you from these folk, August 5th to the 15th. August the 15th, to the 29th, we now in the sixth house of health matters, work matters, tenancies, rental agreements, and pets. Because it's coming from the house of partnerships, there's probably a draw drawback. You know, it's like, okay, my love partner from the past uh, wants me to know about the health problem they have, or my love partner from the past wants me to take the pet we used to own together, or my love partner or business partner from the past wants to readdress some work work agreements we had from the past. These are like trying to tie the sixth house and the seventh house together. Legal contracts and agreements belong to the seventh and tenancies and rentals belong to the sixth. You've got a Jupiter Mars conjunction in the house of home. Ultimately, for some of you, there may be some renegotiations and rethinking of contracts to do with property, land, home and real estate 
in any which way, whether it's purchase, sale, or rentals, and you may be facing this renegotiation, rethinking uh, energy, August the 5th to the 28th, so that you can go forward on August 29th through to September 9th, and it's game on, right? You've got a new plan about rental property, buying property, selling property, tenancies and agreements around that, and, in, and it may be in, in concert with a significant other. Mercury retrograde in general, though, August 15th to the 29th may have you make some revisions to your health protocols and re really rethink and relook at the way you increase your health, especially given that there is a flow to Chiron in the house of what you ingest. And a lot of you will maybe look at redoing your dietary style in order to improve your health. And Mercury retrograde can be medical tests from the past or re re readdressed or looked at or redone. And you find some new information. And a lot of this looks like healing through dietary style including getting rid of addictions and self-undoing. Um, and that Kazemi reset button in Leo on August the 18th is a massive reset around health and wellness and rental agreements and pets and work and job. Whoa. So you may in the six weeks that follow it, start a new job from August 18th at a few weeks, six weeks, right? Start it and get a legal contract to start a new job. I say for some of you looking for employment, the Mercury Kazemi, August the 15th and all that retrogradation, opportunities for employment from your past resurface and you're able to jump on it in the future. Um, and also, you know, colleagues and coworkers from your past may be reaching out August of 15th, bosses in the past to the 29th. And then as the direct motion begins through to September 9th, you are looking at offers for jobs, right? Connected to people from your past. Those are options as well. Jump into the free Kazemi with a webinar with me. Victor Alfard, the solitary one, gives it a lot of intensity and power. And you may find it very helpful uh, to learn more about this Kazemi. So you can use it and harness the magical day of the Kazemi, August the 18. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to like, just, just share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, help my channel reach 100,000 subscribers. If you like this kind of content, then I am more inspired to produce it because you are cheerleading me on. Thank you very much. Sky Reader starts in September, I think. Retrogradation, who knows? But please jump aboard the uh, early bird notice wait list because you'll get first dibs in getting into the course. It will fill up. Plus, you'll get early bird access discount codes as well. There are about 800 people on the wait list for the class in terms of early bird notice. So it's pretty well going to fill up as soon as I send that email out to you guys. So you really want to get into that email list down below for Sky Reader and learn more about the class by looking at the description link in my description box as well to take you to my website. Thanks for listening, everyone. Recording on July 30th for my Patreon community who gets early access at free content. If you like early access at free content, please consider joining my community for a mere five bucks a month. I think you'll enjoy it there. It's more intimate. It's more connected. I can read all your comments and respond to all of you. If you like to dialogue with me and get me to listen to you, that's probably the best place to reach me. Thank you so very much. And I'll see you guys in my next video. This is coming out on Thursday, the 1st of August. And then my, probably my RFK video will probably come out on Friday. Um, I'm thinking that's when I'll put my political videos out and that's maybe a plan. So look up, look for the RFK hour long deep dive video. And uh, the video after that will be on Sunday. We'll be doing the Venus moves into the sign of Virgo, uh, all signs delineation on Sunday. And on Monday, of course, is my weekly all signs forecast. So a lot going on in the sky. See you guys uh, soon in the hopefully my class this fall or my patreon community or just here on youtube thank you so much